Welcome back to the Teacup Trail. We are in episode 4 of season 10 of One House to Heart. Forgive me for my raspy voice <laughs> to have this review. I haven't been feeling great this week and I've been working from home and I hate it. <laughs> I hate being sick. Uh, but the good thing working at home, I have some flexibility <laughs> to film another episode with you. This episode is my favorite so far. I think it is so heartwarming all around. And we opened up some stuff that we haven't really seen happen on this show and talk about it. Uh, we will get there um, once we uh, reach those scenes. I'm so excited to talk about this episode. It's my favorite yet, which will get started. What a difference a few weeks have made to our little town. As word spreads about Hope Springs, tourists have been slowly arriving. The hot springs are bringing new opportunities, new prosperity, and new health. Get my tea with me. <laughs> Close enough, teacup trail. Um, we get to hear Elizabeth talk to her journal writing. I think this is the second time this season. She's talking about Hope Springs and the benefits of the tourist attraction. You can see that Bill is still super annoyed by the new people coming into town. And soon there will be even more good news. My dear friend Rosemary is expecting any day now. When her time comes, the women of Hope Valley will keep her close and in our hearts. In the last episode, we had the baby shower and Minnie distributed a bunch of candles, one for each of the women. And Elizabeth got one and is sitting on her desk. And it's just a, a special celebration, a special remembrance of the baby that is about to come to arrive uh, to Rosemary and Lee. It's just an exciting time. And speaking about babies in general, this is the episode. If you haven't watched it yet, this is a big episode for Rosemary and Lee. And I'm so excited to talk about it. Everything's looking great. We're a week past when you thought the baby would come, and the baby isn't moving as much. I, I don't think it's normal. It's perfectly normal. Sometimes babies get quiet just before labor. It's happening. It's happening. Um, this is <laughs> this is so exciting. Um, Rosemary and the regular checkup, right, right before the baby arrival. They said a doctor. We can be confident that Dr. Faye knows well like what to expect before labor and during labor and post labor. But Rosemary, the popular lady that always worries about everything, uh, of course, she's gonna worry about her baby. Are you sure about that? Because with this baby, it's usually like a football game going on in well, there. I haven't been sleeping as well as yeah. I would like. Maybe that has something to do with it. Or diet. What does that mean? No, I don't mean like eating. I just mean I, like I made a brisket the other day. Maybe I made it too spicy. Well, it was very spicy. Well, it wasn't that spicy. It was too spicy. I was wondering if the writers tried to throw us off. Lee mentioned about the baby picking up like a storm. Like, usually it would be a boy, right? However, in my opinion, this is like my primary guess since the beginning of the season. I'm thinking it's a girl, especially when Rosemary talked to Elizabeth about Rosemary mom. Um, that very emotional scene, and I think it was a foreshadow of Rosemary's journey this season. Uh, to motherhood and also the fact that um, she might have a baby girl because of, of her past experience with her mom uh, doesn't mean that it will be a girl but that's my primary guess and why I think it's a girl but right now like this baby is very active 
I mean, it is normal, like, whether it's a boy or girl, um, but maybe they try to tour us off, like, it would be a boy. But I think it would be great if they have a girl. I think it would be a great match because we already have little Jack. Uh, it would be nice to have a little girl, a new baby girl in town. It's probably just the progression of the pregnancy. And I find that worrying doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Worry? <laughs> We're not worried. Do we seem worried to Should you? Should we be worried? What? Lee definitely joined the bandwagon of worrying about everything <laughs> with Rosemary. Uh, it's pretty normal. Uh, this is the first child. Of course, they want everything to go well. But we know Dr. Faye. She on point. She knows her stuff, and it's just a matter of time. The best thing that you can do is drink liquid, stay active, walk around. See? I said walk. You didn't. And most importantly, try not to think about it. It's very important to follow your doctor orders, right? Uh, especially going into labor. <laughs> Rosemary and Lee, they do look very worried. And it's normal and it's hard not to worry. Uh, but Faye, she, she's great. She, she's a great doctor. She knows her stuff. And she's home um, at the same time. A home doctor is very important, uh, especially for the mom to be. But right now, overall, like, it's so exciting. Like, the baby is gonna come um, very soon. Not to think about it. Jesus, how can we think of anything but? I know, I know. Maybe we should just try and think of something else, though. Like, um, baby name. Lee, that is still about the baby. <sighs> you're right, you're right, it is. Um... It's very good that they are following Faith's recommendation, uh, try not to think about the labor, anything associated with the baby. Um, Lee did try, you know, the first thought that came into his mind, oh, baby names, and baby names are fun, but at the same time, uh, it can add stress, and Rosemary like, no, we just cannot talk about anything associated with the baby or the medical aspect of the baby being born very soon. Okay, let's see, uh, oh, I know, your favorite outfits. <laughs> I'm never gonna fit into those outfits again. Okay, okay, that was a bad one, that was a bad one. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh, I know. Favorite Valley Voice headlines. That's well, not terrible. Yeah. Second, Lee thought of Rosemary outfits. This is really funny, this scene between the two. I feel like they always have a funny moment in each episode. Um, <laughs> Rosemary, you know, she had those emotional side of her, right? Being pregnant, like your hormones like go crazy and you get emotional very quickly, very easily. So that's why she reacted like that. She's like, oh, I'm not gonna fit in those outfits. Now I'm thinking like, if her fashion gonna change a bit, you know, after the baby, especially her being a fashionista and just love to, to dress up and dress fancy. Um, fashion is like, uh, one of her love language, right? Um, so it's funny, <laughs> she uh, was very, very sad about the outfits that, the old outfit that she cannot uh, fit into. So she might have a, a little bit of a change in her wardrobe after the baby is born. But we know that Rosemary is fashionable, whether before motherhood or after the baby is born, like she will find a way to stay stylish. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, milk prices? Fluid. She's solid. Yes! <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a good pretty. one! And then there was... Oh, good morning! Ooh, that baby is taking its own sweet time, huh? <laughs> Locals have penchant for the painfully obvious. Let's keep walking. The somewhat saved the day. Um, that's a great idea. Until Mike interrupted them. And of course, you know, being in town, everyone knows everyone, everyone knows everything that's going on with you. And I was thinking, wrong timing, Mike, like, please, like, don't make it any worse for this parents to be. Oh, hi, you two. They say raspberry leaf tea helps get things moving along. <sighs> Friends won't let couple forget their baby's overdue. <laughs> Let's keep walking. Flowen, she... Meant it in a good way. Um, I mean, that's a good advice. She went through that. Um, I think she had two kids. Um, 
so she's just trying to be helpful um, but yeah everyone in town is very excited for Leah Rosemary um, they cannot wait they're very happy for this couple and they continue to walk which is nice they are definitely following Dr. Faith's orders to walk uh, to think about something else besides the baby um, and hopefully Rosemary will stay um, active on the liquid and hopefully it will help her to start moving along into the labor process. Hang on a second, hold it, hold it. You need to arc it higher. I'm just a little rusty. Now listen, the key is to push from your lower chest, okay? And when you shoot, release with both hands. When I first watched this episode, I thought um, Bill Hart, that um, stranger guy outside of the mission tile, um, it could be the bandit, right? Um, it could be one of the bad guys that been stealing from other towns and um, robbing people. So this is not good. We don't know his name yet, we don't know what is up with him just yet, but the way that he behaving, like, you can tell that he's a bad guy, potentially a bad guy. Wow, you play basketball? A little bit. You try. There! <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Where are the other kids? Why are you playing alone? I don't mind playing alone. Uh, but Bill, he teaching Jamie how to play basketball at the same time. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I just sense like there's something going to happen between <laughs> Mrs. J. John and Bill. Uh, Bill, I don't think he had ever had any children or a wife. Please remind me because I don't have the greatest memory. Um, so it could be like something good for Bill, you know, like have Jamie as like his bonus son and to have that experience to teach this young boy to live life and to uh, play the uh, basketball and so forth. Um, I thought that was very nice of Bill to just stop um, his day to teach Jamie how to play basketball uh, while we know that Bill is a very, very busy guy. All right. Well, a little word of advice, Jamie. If you want the other kids to like you, you got to show that you like them. Now arc it higher. Get it up there. There you go. That's it. Keep arcing it higher. Jamie is still adjusting to Hope Valley. Um, I think the big struggle is making new friends. Um, he's very used to just being independent by himself, just him and his mom. I think Hope Valley would be a great experience for Jamie in making new friends. The children of Hope Valley, they're very welcoming, very friendly. Um, I think they just need to um, be on the right path, <laughs> especially Ali and Jamie. I feel like they got, they started on the wrong foot. Um, so I, I'm seeing a potential breakthrough for Jamie this season, and hopefully we get to see that. And Bill notices. He's like, you know, why are you not with the other kids? Like, you know, isn't it more fun to play basketball with the other kids instead of by yourself? I feel like that's like a father to son advice, uh, what Bill advised Jamie to do, uh, just to join the other kids, invite them to play basketball with Jamie, uh, just to break the ice. Um, he made a good point, like you're not gonna make friends uh, without talking to other kids. Uh, so hopefully Jamie takes Bill advice. Um, in the meantime, he seemed to be getting better at basketball and he could use basketball like as a, as a leeway, like as a um, an opportunity to talk to other kids, like, hey, do you want to play basketball? And maybe Jamie will impress them with his new basketball skills. Boom! <gasps> oh my goodness! I got you. We were spying on you. Yeah, you got me. Here, have a seat, please. Thank you. Besides Rosemary and Lee's storyline this episode, 
this family <laughs> right here. I'm like, um, this is so adorable, this scene. Um, I was so excited before this season started uh, to see that um, developed relationship, uh, especially between Lucas and Little Jack. Um, and we will talk about that more uh, later on in this review. Um, but there's just a sweet picture of that future family, you know. Um, Elizabeth and Lucas are not married yet, but this is such a sweet foreshadow of the family that they will have officially once the wedding happens. Lucas, this is beautiful. Everything is perfect. Mm, there's no such thing in life. Oh, I spoke too fast. Maybe there's one thing. Or two. Lucas, he's a, a successful businessman. But when it comes to personal life, like, he just has this, like, high goals, high standards that he wants to meet. Um, taking care of Elizabeth and little Jack. And that was such a sweet thing to say, to hear from Lucas about how Elizabeth is perfect for him and little Jack. Um, it just touched my heart that Lucas is very loving and very accepting to having little Jack as his bonus son. Um, I can't wait to see that relationship blossom between little Jack and Lucas. Aww. Hey buddy, you looking forward to our plan? What plan? Well, when your mother needs to go spend time with Rosemary, you and I, we're gonna have a party. Just us. And maybe Uncle Lee. A party? That's a good plan. I thought so. Do you notice Elizabeth was holding hand uh, with Lucas in the scene? Um, if you pay close attention, they um, holding hands like under the table. Um, I thought that was cute, you know, that secret hand holding. Um, but Lucas, he gonna babysit uh, little Jack while Elizabeth helps Rosemary with the labor and the birth of Rosemary baby. So we get to see some bonding time between Lucas and Little Jack, and I can't wait to talk about that later on. Um, but yeah, it's just such a sweet family moment in this scene. Lucas, Elizabeth, hey, Little Jack. Hi, Uncle Lee. There she is. Oh, please don't ask me about the baby. Oh, I won't. Am I allowed to ask how you're feeling? I'm fine. Well, not exactly. So adorable, uh, little Jack, Halsley, Uncle Lee, and I I'm sure Rosemary, Aunt Rosemary. Um, it just showed that very close friendship that Elizabeth has with Rosemary and Lee, uh, basically like a second family. Um, it's so, so here hearing little Jack talk throughout the season. Um, I think it's, it's a huge difference compared to season nine, like in the good way. Like he growing up, he, he is more aware of things that are going around him and uh, he understanding more words and speaking them out loud. Uh, I thought that was very cute, how he called Uncle Lee. Elizabeth, I'm counting on you. Oh, hey. Lee has a very weak constitution oh, when it comes to anything that- Come I on now, that is not entirely true. Lee? Last Christmas when I stubbed my toe, you nearly went into well, shock. Because you got those tiny little delicate feet, I was worried. Basically, Rosemary is counting on Elizabeth because Elizabeth went through that uh, birth process with little Jack. <laughs> um, and at the same time, I was thinking, like, this is like a preview for Lucas. Like, Lucas never experienced having a wife and um, having a pregnant wife and stuff. So, this is like a, a preview for him, like, okay, this is how it feels being married and having uh, your first kid with your wife and all that. Um, I think it's very amusing, entertaining for Lucas to watch this unfold between Rosemary and Lee. Is this new? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. It's wonderful. The open air and cheerful ambiance of a Venetian piazza coupled with the je ne sais quoi oh. of a French cafe. And wouldn't you say it's pretty much perfect? Rosemary, she, she has many hats as well. Like she into fashion, she into party planning and interior design, um, newspaper, uh, being a wife and being a mom. She has a lot of things going on <laughs> on her plate, but she's very 
detail. Like she paid attention. She um, noticed that there's some change in the porch area of the saloon. Positively, except, well, it could use a, a cup of tea in the scone. Sweetheart, we should probably... Uh... <gasps> yes, doctor's orders are to keep walking, so we must carry on. And it's funny that Elizabeth asked Rosemary, oh, isn't it perfect? And <laughs> Lucas just, like, shaking his head because he liked to have everything perfect, even though nothing is perfect in life. Uh, but that's how Lucas is. He just has that high standard mentality, and he wants the best. For all of his customers, he wants the best for Elizabeth and Little Jack and the people that he loves in Hope Valley. You've done a brilliant job of distracting me. Glad to have been of service. And we'll be here when you need us. I know. Bye. I wonder what it could use. I'm sure nothing. Well, I need to get back to work. But please stay, make yourselves comfortable. I'll be back with a treat, okay, buddy? <gasps> a treat? Okay, buddy. <laughs> Lucas was very interested to hear more of what Rosemary's opinion of the Porsche area. Um, she was about to like give another um, advice um, on the furniture, and then Elizabeth jumped in about the tea and the stone, like letting Rosemary know, like, cut it off, like, <laughs> don't trust my boyfriend uh, even more. Lucas and Little Jack, they are still in that stage of calling buddy to each other. Um, I know there were some talks on Twitter, like, what Little Jack gonna eventually call Lucas, um, when Lucas and Elizabeth get married, you not here wait for that moment. Um, I know, like, there's, like, different types of words, like, of a father, or maybe in French, or it's just so many options, but let me know what you think, um, Little Jack gonna call Lucas. Um, I'm sure he, he gonna call him dad eventually. Um, he will come to that age of, like, understanding of, like, okay, like, where's my real dad? Like, what happened to him? And I'm sure Lucas will show him all the love in the world and raise him, like, his own son. And he, Little Jack will decide eventually, you know, like, oh, dad or daddy or or puppy. That would be a sweet moment to look forward to um, maybe this season or sometime in season 11. What were Auntie Rosemary and Uncle Lee talking about? Remember we talked about their baby? Pretty soon Auntie and Uncle are going to be a mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy? Mm-hmm. This particular part of the scene, uh, it got to me. I was just like, okay, this episode gonna get me emotional. Like, uh, not only Rosemary and Lee are going to be parents, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And second of all, uh, that question, you know, that little boy, little Jack, like, help me to that understanding, like, okay, like, with my real daddy and Elizabeth having to start thinking i'm sure she thought about it before but like this moment is kind of like propelled her to start thinking like okay how should i tell um jack about his dad like like how much can i tell him like he doesn't understand everything just yet at the same time like elizabeth gonna marry lucas right and jack doesn't understand that lucas you know is a bonus dad you know uh, so it would take time, right? And Jack gonna grow up and he will come to the understanding eventually. But it's just something important that Elizabeth need to think about and figure it out. And of course, you know, it's gonna make her emotional because her and uh, Jack, um, her first husband, they had a wonderful love story and they loved each other so much. And, she still misses him, uh, that's normal. Um, you can love again, you can love, you know, two different people at different times in life. Um, it's a lot of emotion. Um, I feel like a lot of emotion are building up inside of Elizabeth Hart in this scene. And it's just uh, an early warning to me, like, okay, this episode is gonna be uh, rocky, like, in the good way. And I think it's great that we get to see that story that side of Elizabeth because we really haven't like seen it that much and since little Jack is growing up like it's gonna it's gonna happen eventually <clears throat> I 
I know. I know it's your booth. Will you join me? Join you in my booth? I really do need to talk to management around here. <laughs> you can always get a little sign made that says reserve. Not a bad idea. Thank you. At that point, I think she's doing it on purpose to annoy Bill, but maybe she wanted to get to know him. I'm still sensing that vibe between them. Like, please tell me I'm not the only one. I just saw Jamie outside. He seems to like basketball. He didn't used to. I'm so delighted at how he's just come to life since we've been here. You no, know, it's always best to get kids out of the city and into nature. You know, I hadn't thought of it before, but you're right. A house in the country could be just the ticket. Maybe even here. Bill mentioned about Jamie and it opened up. <laughs> opened up a hand of worms. Uh, I mean, Bill just watching out for the hit, but Mrs. St. John, uh, we still don't know what uh, that phone call that she had um, at near the end of episode three, like what that phone call was about. Um, so she's thinking about moving to Hope Valley, um, possibly, or another town, um, just to get away from Philadelphia, out of that city life. So she's, uh, brainstorming about the future of, um, uh, her and her son, like, the possible future home, and that could be in Hope Valley. Oh, this is a long way from home. Which would mean we'd have to plan to stay here. Maybe even move here. You're just full of good ideas, aren't you? Well, that wasn't exactly... Shall we order? Do you see that little smile on Mrs. St. John? Um, she gonna keep Bill on his toes. Like, I just know it. She's just that, that type of woman that... Um, gonna drive Bill crazy in a good way, and maybe there'll be something good, um, created between the two. Uh, but she seemed very interested in staying in Hope Valley, and I think the way she said it, like, one of the reasons, not only because to benefit Jamie, and he seemed to, you know, adjust to the country life really well in Hope Valley, but I think the other reason is the way that she said it and looked at Bill at the same time, I think she wanted to stay in Hope Valley because of Bill, too. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but right now, I'm just like, there's something going on between these two. <laughs> Looks like someone's getting used to you. I wouldn't be too impressed. I was talking to Scout. <laughs> I think Faye softened a little bit toward Nathan, don't you think? Um, at this point <laughs> in this episode, um, Scout and Nathan, they still need um, improvement, but that's such a, an adorable dog. And I'm really happy that they, the writers decided to uh, bring in a new dog into the show. Um, whoever I do with that, I thought it was great. Uh, bring some uh, humor, especially to Nathan, that serious Mountie guy. <laughs> Listen. I've been wanting to thank you for coming after me and chasing the squirrel and the bandit. I can be stubborn at times. No. You? Stubborn? Well, I hope you'll consider tagging along next time. About damn time. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like about time. Like, hello. She finally humbled herself and properly thank Nathan, like, like, come on, like, Nathan is willing to put his time aside to go with you on your doctor run and protect you, uh, keeping you safe, like, anything could have happened to her, but thankfully, nothing happened to her, uh, finally, she finally thanked him. Well, if it's all right with him, I, I guess it's all right with me. I, I am so sorry. He's a, a work in progress. Uh, it's fine. I love dogs. Your hand. It's bleeding. The puzzle pieces coming together. Um, how? Okay. Like, he's not the best Mountie dog yet. But why he barking, right? Like, all of a sudden. So this stranger guy, this new guy in town, like, he could be that bandit that uh, ran into Faith um, during her doctor run. 
So this could be the guy. You, uh, you, you new in town? Just grabbing supplies. It's fine. I'm not so sure about that. Why don't you come over with me to my office and we can take care of this? Uh, sure. Thanks. Faye, as a doctor, of course, like her instinct, her her doctor mindset, um, ignited like right away. Like your hand is bleeding. Like you, you cannot just uh, walk away. Like we need to take care of your hand. And the the new guy, like of course, like he sees this mounty uh, guy, and he doesn't want to like talk to a police and get. Um, question and all that so he's like i'm gonna step away from this mounty guy and use the doctor as a escape right to get the hand um bandage and you know leave her valley as soon as possible nathan he knows that um something is up with this stranger and he looks at how it's how it looks back to nathan and nathan like okay maybe there's something fishy about this um, a no-name guy and how is sensing something. Uh, but dogs, like, they are smart, right? And they can be very reliable, especially in this case. So how might be onto something and hopefully that will uh, encourage Nathan to keep an eye on this guy that they don't know his name yet. Uh, but at the same time, Faith is with him right now in the doctor office so i'm sure nathan gonna uh keep his eyes on them morning hey <laughs> morning i think it was just that moment of henry just appreciating a second chance at life and just being a free man uh, he gets to go back to his stable and take care of his horse um he's feeling really grateful she's a beaut indeed I've grown to admire horses more and more every day comforted creatures indeed they are and they, they don't ask too many questions <laughs> Everyone has like their own method, their own way of escaping and go to uh, a place that's quiet or their favorite place just to release their mind and have that peaceful moment to themselves. And the horse stable is Henry's private space uh, where he, he can just like let it out and be at peace and uh, have a, a peaceful mind. You know that peace you feel right now? You could have it all the time. I'm always here if you want to talk. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm just tired, Joseph. I know. Joseph, he is a great friend. He is a great pastor. And that one thing I love about Joseph, like I think it's so important that pastors be there for the congregation, not only at a corporate level, but on a personal level too. And Joseph letting Henry know like he is always there for him um, if he needs someone to talk to, especially from a spiritual perspective, um, having that spiritual guidance from a pastor. And Joseph was talking about peace and that is the peace of God. And hopefully by the end of the season, Henry find that and that he accept that and that he accept that God forgives him too, and that he forgive himself as well. Doesn't look that bad. We'll have you fixed up in no time. So, you're a doctor? Yes, I'm the town doctor and for the surrounding area. And what brings you this way? Um, just running errands. The stranger asking face if she is a doctor, right? In return, she asks him question like, um, you're not the only one that's gonna ask a question here. Uh, but yeah, like out of curiosity, like, okay, who is this guy, right? And he could be the bandit, so uh, red flag, like, face, like, be careful. Hmm. I'm from Yuko Creek, other side of Rock Creek. Huh. Oh dear, I'm out of gauze. I'm gonna go get some from the pharmacy. Sit tight.
Going somewhere. Bad, bad idea. Um, yeah, I love Nathan. <laughs> He's a great Mountie. Um, I just love how he was just like standing there with Chow, just being like, who a guy, who a good guy. Um, but yeah, the bad guy, uh, he's in trouble now. I knew something wasn't right. Or at least, you know, the dog did. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sure an upstanding citizen like yourself paid for this. I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised how many innocent people I find climbing out of windows. Maybe he had the right intention, um, maybe to like provide for his family, but it's still a wrong thing to do, right? And Nathan, like, you in Hope Valley, like, this is the Hope Valley rules, like, you should not be stealing stuff from the mission tile. Uh, this poor guy, you know, like, <laughs> he's in trouble. But at the same time, if he is the bandit, like, he should know. Like, if you get caught, like, you're gonna get the punishment. Nathan? What? What's going on? He's a thief. He stole this from the mercantile. Lard. Is this true? Yes, ma'am. He's just a kid, Nathan. Faith, like, wait, he's my patient. Like, what are you thinking him? Faith, once again, uh, she's like, very easy on this kid, right? She's just like, he's a kid. You know why? Uh, I think he's old enough to know the consequence of uh, what he just did. Hold this. Look familiar? You. I'm sorry. Let's go. Then Faith's perspective of this stranger uh, changed. She's like, oh, it was you. So you that kid. Um, so yeah, like, thankfully they caught the kid. Uh, but at the same time, um, it, it's not good because he reached Hope Valley, right? And he did steal some stuff. And the possibility of him, you know, continue to do that, right? Is he gonna make it right? And um, go back to his hometown and just not be a bandit anymore? So this is a case that, in the first place, like, Nathan shouldn't be dealing with, you know? Like, it shouldn't happen, but it is happening, and it is something that needs to stop. And kudos to Cal for being a good boy and for being a good Mountie dog. So he has some of his Mountie skills, you know, up his sleeve. Uh, taking him a while, but I think this situation, I think it's gonna um, bring attention to Nathan, like, okay, Cal is not like the worst dog i mean he is smart in some ways <laughs> mommy yes honey bear the bungalow is going to be a daddy when can i see my daddy oh sweetheart don't you remember what we talked about your daddy is in heaven but where is heaven another emotional scene like they got to me i was like um <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's just great to see this happen because it's gonna happen and this is the time. Um, Elizabeth, she gets emotional talking about this. Um, it is an emotional topic to talk about, uh, very vulnerable. It's a deep heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And this cute little boy, he doesn't understand everything just yet. Um, and Elizabeth just trying to say it like in the most simple way, in a way that he understands. And at the same time, uh, she doesn't say it much because if she say a lot of things about um, Jack Father, I think you're gonna, you know, bring up the memories and the emotion and the heartbreak from his death. Well, heaven is up above us. And I know that may seem far away, but your daddy is also in our hearts. Here and right here. And that's where he'll always be. I think Elizabeth is doing a great job as a mom. Um, she tried her best. Uh, she tried to explain it to Jack um, in the most simple way, in the way that he understands. Uh, but she's gonna repeat it uh, a few more times, of course, um, until Jack 
come to that age where he understands everything and he remembers uh, what his mom told him and all that. Uh, it just showed that he is very curious and he is at that learning age and um, she is understanding more things. So with that comes a lot of questions and Elizabeth does need to repeat it a few more times. I bet she will. Come on, I want to show you something. Let's go. And I'm sure she will tell him the whole story about his father, including his death, like how he died and his personality, what he liked and all that, when Jack is old enough to understand. Um, but yeah, this is where it's emotional. Um, it's just that memories, it's the memories of Jack coming back, especially like as a, as a fan of the show and as the audience, like, you know, who Jack was, right? And you know how great he was, how special he was, and that special love story he had with Elizabeth. Like, we know that, but little Jack, like, he didn't know that. He didn't see that. Well, now that I think about it, his voice did sound familiar. I can't believe he showed his face around here after what he did. Hey, where are you going? I didn't finish dressing his hand. Good point by Nathan. This kid um, had the gut to show up in Hope Valley, right? Um, he disguised himself with the handkerchief when he ran into Faith earlier this season, and he knew what Faith looked like. I'm sure he remembered what Faith uh, looked like, like her facial features, and, and I'm sure he had a glance of Nathan uh, trying to chase after him. So he already knew Nathan and Faith um, in that way and having the gut to show up in Hope Valley, yeah, it's not cool. May I see your hand, please? I'm sorry, ma'am. You should be. I would ask you why you did what you did, but I doubt I'd get an honest answer. I messed up. Not much more to it than that. I think the realization of like anything to have happened to Faith um, the first time around uh, with this uh, bandit guy, I think it came to her like, oh my goodness, like I have died, I have injured. Um, I think she like humbled herself um, to be on that level of understanding like, wait, this kid, like he was the one that could have harmed me if Nathan wasn't there and, and so forth. So part of her, she, she is mad. <laughs> Gonna have to agree with him there. You must have had a reason. It's been a tough time. Everything dried up in the valley. My folks have been trying to hold on to the farm, but nothing will grow. There's no work. I got little sisters. That's terrible. At the same time though, throughout the scene, uh, she still had that heart of compassion. She wanted to know why the kid did it. Uh, there must be a good reason, even though what he did was still bad. You know, in my experience, a thief is good at two things, stealing and lying. And this one only seems to be good at the latter. I'm pretty bad at both. And you're right. If I'd known you two were from around here, I wouldn't have shown my face. Yeah, you would have just robbed another mercantile. Nathan, he had that, um, what do you call it? That mentality of like right and wrong, and they have that mentality of just having a heart of compassion for this. For this kid, even though what he did, you know, was wrong, he Nathan, he's just trying to be very protective of Hope Valley, especially for Faith. Anything could have happened to Faith, um, anything could have happened to Nathan Go. So Nathan, he just like want to get to the bottom of it and just punish this kid and uh, try to like get into his head like what you did was still wrong and Nathan um he dealt with a lot of situation I'm sure similar to this and that's why he kept reminding Faith like 
Don't believe everything what this kid is saying or don't even believe anything this kid is saying. But they, she had that heart of compassion and trying to understand why this kid stole those two items. People make mistakes and we can give them a second chance. Sometimes they'll surprise you. This will sting. When Faith mentioned about giving people second chances, people make mistakes, they might, you know, surprise you if they, you know, make things right the second time around. Um, and the way that she looked over to Nathan when she said those things, and I'm just like, is this only about the kid or is this also about Faith and Nathan relationship? Faith and Nathan, they seem to be on a better terms in episode 4, which is a good thing, but I still think that they still need to talk it out about their feelings for one another. But at the end of all this, like, this kid gonna get punishment in one way or another, and we will get to see what happened to him. Jack, I have a surprise for you. It's something very special. A surprise? Mm-hmm. A Mountie hat. Wow. This is your daddy's Mountie hat. Little Jack, he's a smart boy. At the same time, he might see Nathan a lot, and Nathan has a Mountie hat. And I'm sure Elizabeth uh, talked a little bit uh, to Little Jack about how his dad was a Mountie and all that. And I'm sure they have pictures of, of Jack um, around the house. Uh, but this special hat um, is very special. <laughs> Because um, Jack wore it and having Elizabeth show it to him, uh, to their son, once again, it made me emotional and I went, like, oh my god, like all the feels. Uh, but it just showed that Elizabeth is opening up a bit more uh, to share more about uh, little Jack's dad. Can I wear it if I'm very, very careful? Of course you can. You can wear it anytime you like. How do I look? Elizabeth, she went through a lot. She went through the high highs and the low lows. Um, yeah, and it, all those experiences that she went through, like falling in love with Jack and getting married and uh, getting pregnant and Jack's death and all that. And, uh, and then like combining all of, of those moments in this scene. It made her very emotional. She just like, oh my goodness, like my son, he looks just like your dad. And um, seeing him wear Jack Mountie hat, it made it even more real, and uh, it made her feel more emotional. Emotional again. You look. You look just like your daddy. Yeah, this was such a heartwarming scene. I feel like at the same time, it's like a full circle moment. Uh, like this little boy, he gonna grow up to be a man and God knows if he gonna be a Mountie. Like your dad, that's like another <laughs> different ball game right there. That too soon. Seeing little Jack wearing that Mountie hat, it seemed real, it felt real. And that's why Elizabeth is very emotional. And little Jack is basically like a replica. He's a, a special reminder of who Jack Thornton was. Um, it's a very bittersweet moment because of course Elizabeth would love to have Jack, um, you know, alive and see their son grow up to be a beautiful, handsome boy. Maybe we should print the train schedule up sweetheart, there. Sweetheart, don't worry about that I right now, that's okay? A good it's idea. fine, I'll fix it we'll later. Put the train schedule up there, and everyone Ani, will know. Just let it go. Oh. This is funny. They try to like occupy their minds with something else other than baby. Uh, but the next part of this scene is the big moment. Oh. Oh my. Oh my what? Oh dear. Oh dear? Oh. So, what, is this oh. it? I don't know. I'm, what? I'm, I'm quite certain. Okay. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Y y yes? 
I love the emotion in this scene. I think it's funny at the same time. Like, this is the first time they going through this, and Rosemary is like, is this it? Is this how it feels to have contraction? So she is officially in labor. Oh, okay, well, 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 where is me? I don't know. Get me! Ah, okay, okay, uh, okay. Hey! Lords, Lords, the baby is coming! Get me! The baby's coming? Yes! Oh, I'll get her! Everyone knows, like, just like standing around and I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, sweetheart, that's it. You're doing great. You're doing it. Uh, she's at the jail. I'll get her. Uh, Lucas can drive. I'll find him. I'm getting Lucas. I'll get Faith. Yes, get Faith. Where is Faith? I don't know, sweetheart. She's coming. Don't worry. But uh, Florence, Molly, and Ned are uh, coming to the rescue. They, like, the first responder team. Um, and then Lucas uh, gonna drive them over. I feel like Lucas, no, Lee knows how to drive, right? Um, but Lucas, he has a heart, so um, they depend on him for that. Uh, it sounds like they're gonna bring Rosemary back to her house to have the baby at home. I love the, the spirit of togetherness, community in the scene, helping Lee and Rosemary get back to their home so Rosemary can uh, feel comfortable in having uh, the baby at home. Molly, is, is it? It is! Faith! Oh, oh, Faith, Ned! Yes. I don't know. Where's her? Where's she? Oh! She's gone. Okay. Rosemary, Rosemary, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Breathe. Just like I showed you. Breathe. Faith and Nathan came over. Um, finally, Faith uh, arrived. And Rosemary, I mean, totally understandable. Having a doctor there is very important. And once again, this is the first time for Rosemary to go to labor. And oh, Lucas is on his way! Let's get her to the car. <laughs> gently! Gently. Nice and slow. Gently. There you go, sweetheart. Good, 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 good. There we go. Nice and slow. Okay. You okay? Oh, bad question. I, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Stupid question. Here we go. Careful. This is like a beautiful mess. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, a beautiful chaos <laughs> that is happening. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just awesome how everyone, well, most people are helping uh, Rosemary and Lee getting to Lucas heart. And I was just thinking like Nathan, he never dealt with this <laughs> before, so this is like a preview for Nathan too, right? Like just in case if he had, you know. Um, any future kids for his future wife, just saying. But Faith, thank God for Faith, she know what to do, and um, she's a very home doctor, which is really important, and uh, Rosemary has a lot of trust in her. So, silly question, I'm sorry. Let's go. Yeah, you're doing so good. I got it. Thanks. Good job, sweetheart. Uh, excuse me. Let's clear a path, people! Okay, let's go, let's go! Lucas, very nice of him to put time aside away from his work to help Rosemary and Lee get back to the house to have the baby. It looks like Ned was about to drive Lucas hard, but Lucas got it. Um, funny how <laughs> Ned tried to like warn the other people like get out of the way and Nathan just like screamed it out and you know him being a Mountie uniform like everyone else like obey his command. Uh, but yeah, this is happening. This is really happening. <laughs> Congratulations, Dad. <laughs> Hold on, sweetheart. You're doing great. Uh, that quick uh, special um, moment between Lee and Lucas, that brotherhood. Lee's like, this is really happening, and Lucas is so happy for him. I thought that was a very nice, sweet comment. Uh, congratulations, Dad. And I also thought about the time that we're going to see, hopefully, season 11, maybe, um, when Lucas uh, experienced uh, fatherhood. Uh, from, like, the beginning, like, when he has his own kid with Elizabeth, like, how he's going to get nervous and freak out and not knowing what to do. I can't wait for Lucas to experience that with Elizabeth. It started. At last. Rosemary? 
Lucas drove her home. Faith is with her. Oh, I hope she has an easy time. Oh, it's never exactly easy. Well, what do we do? Hope, pray, and cook. They're gonna need a lot of food. How can we help? Grab the vegetables and start chopping. Okay. Once again, uh, this show uh, shows many great examples of being great neighbors and great community and friends becoming like family, a motherhood, the mom club. Very nice of these three ladies to start hooking for Rosemary and Lee because once the baby born, <laughs> they're not gonna have time to hook or probably will not remember uh, to eat, you know. Um, they're gonna be so busy with the baby. Um, they need they need food and they need to be reminded by other people like you need to eat too. Oh, Elizabeth, Rosemary! There you go, careful, careful, careful. Elizabeth, careful. here, I'm here. Okay. Let's get you inside. Yes, don't worry, I've got it. Be careful. Lee, I love you. Oh, sweetheart, not as much as I love you. I'll be right next door, okay? Rosemary, of course, she wanted her best friend to be there, and it brought me back to that moment when Elizabeth gave birth to little Jack and how Rosemary was there for Elizabeth. Now it's the other way around. I, I think that's a beautiful, full circle moment. Um, Lee and Lucas. Lucas was, like, freaking out. He was just like, oh, my gosh. And Lee was also freaking out. And I was just like, Lucas, this is, like, a small sample test of what you're gonna deal with uh, in the future with Elizabeth. I'm sure Elizabeth would get pregnant again. Um, I think she wouldn't mind and I think she would love to have a kid uh, with Lucas. Maybe it would be a girl. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Hopefully it happens in season 11. Do you want to go on the tour? No, thanks. I think I'll just stay behind and read. You sure? Might be fun. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. Back to my school. Jamie is uh, experiencing a little downfall. He's like, I, I was doing great. I thought I was making friends at the science project um, at the hot spring. And after that, it just turned sour for him and he played basketball by himself. And, and now he wanted to be by himself. And his mom is concerned for him. There was a, a switch in, in Jamie's mindset. Like, wait, I don't belong here. Like, people don't like me. I want to go home back in Philadelphia. Um, if the kids in Hope Valley, especially Allie, Toby, and Cooper, if they were a little bit more welcoming and friendly with Jamie. Jamie wouldn't be feeling like this, but at the same time, Bill advised Jamie, like, hey, you need to step out of your comfort zone and say hi to the kids and, you know, give it another shot. Like, you never know unless you try. And Jamie, he seemed to have that quiet nature because he is always by himself. So he needs to step out of his bubble and make friends. Just a few more days, sweetie, I promise. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Mrs. St. John. I am at your service. Here's a map for you. I thought we'd take the buckboard wagon if it suits. Hmm. How perfectly rustic. Mike, Mike, Mike. Um, it's really interesting to see Mike on the saloon end, you know? Uh, we saw him in the oil company um, in, like, different jobs uh, throughout um, the show and now he's working for Lucas. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, at the same time, I think he likes his job um, at the saloon, uh, working for Lucas. And now he um, being a, a personal driver for Mrs. St. John as she goes on tour, a tour of Hope Valley. It's his royal highness. Do you mind if I play? It's hard to play with three. Hey, it's not nice. You know how to play? That was very nice of Pooper um, to allow Jamie to join in the basketball fun. Um, you can tell his parents raised him right, like be nice to people. Um, 
Toby, on the other hand, he told like, I don't like you, though. So. <laughs> uh, but Jamie humbled himself. He's like, hey, I'm trying to make fun to you in Hope Valley. Uh, but that was very nice of Hooper to to break the ice, you know, to um, invite Jamie to play. Because if he didn't, um, this moment would have been awkward. Of course I do. Well, sort of. I'm sorry if I offended you. I have trouble with subtlety. Subtlety means we know what it means. Step by step, Jamie will eventually get there. <laughs> step by step, day by day. See what you got. Hey, nice one. Wow, you're a really good player. I guess. I think the only other issue that I would point out about Jamie is he just needs to tone it down a bit, um, humble himself about his uh, impressive IQ knowledge. Um, I think he would be a great benefit to the whole valley of his. Um, he's a smart boy and he can contribute his knowledge to the other kids and um, you know give them some wisdom. Um, but yeah, she just need to uh, be on the same level as Cooper, Toby, and the other kids in Hope Valley.